Solo. Uh, as you can see, we are in a uh, red lockdown. It's not that bad. It happens fairly often. No reason to take chances, though, so stay quiet. Stay in your assigned bunk and dormitory. If my light in the back changes color, that's when, well, I'll have to be worried. Because it means it's closer to me. Anyway, while we're locked in here, I still have access to the internet, so might as well review some of the uh, files that some of the objects you'll be dealing with. Alright. First, let's see. Oh yeah, it's a safe. It's a safe one for you, so you'll be alright. This is item number SCP-6556. Alright, special containment procedures. The DNS hijack protocol has been implemented by Foundation web crawlers in order to redirect anyone attempting to access the SCP-6556 channel or collection of videos. An alert has been set in place for any future activity by the channel. The description is as follows. SCP-6556 is a channel on the online video sharing platform YouTube titled The Life of Rex, no spaces. Videos uploaded to the channel demonstrate a number of anomalous properties, namely the inclusion of living, anatomically correct dinosaurs filmed in what appears to be the Mesozoic time period. The channel currently has 37 videos uploaded, all of which revolve around a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex through the format of a video blog. The content contained within the video is, for the most part, highly anachronistic. Technical discrepancies exist within SCP-6556, as both the upload date and other pertinent metadata state that the videos were uploaded approximately 66 million years ago. Despite YouTube being launched in 2005 and the internet and video cameras not existing until the 20th century, the about section of the channel is blank. All videos have been uploaded with the title pattern of Dino Vlog, followed by a number corresponding to the order of the video's upload and an exaggerated descriptor of the contents of the video. Example video titles are as follows. Dino Vlog 1, colon, welcome to my channel, exclamation point. Dino Vlog 3, my favorite sunbathing spots. Dino Vlog 5, my life story so far, colon, close parentheses. Dino Vlog 14, musical note emoji, musical note emoji, rap battle against a rapping raptor, musical note emoji, musical note emoji. Dino Vlog 22, a flower almost murdered me, murdered in all capital letters, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six exclamation points. Dino Vlog 24. We are all going to die. Open brackets, not clickbait, close bracket, space, open bracket, funny, close bracket. Dino Vlog 26. Parasaurophilus. Egg omelet, exclamation point, open bracket, yum, close bracket. Dino vlog 27, I'm sorry. Dino vlog 30, filling my entire cave with ammonites, exclamation point, shell emoji, shell emoji, shell emoji. Dino vlog 37, comes with nexus, does my me 
make up? Exclamation point. Question mark. Exclamation point. Dino vlog. 32. Crazy ichthyosaur. Bite. Exclamation point. Dino vlog. 33. Don't roar from Quetzalcoatlus at 3 a.m. Exclamation point. Dino vlog. 34. What happens next will shock you. Exclamation point. Scream emoji. Scary. I almost died. Dino vlog 37. Bright light in sky. Dash. UFO attack. Question mark, question mark. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Observers of videos uploaded to the channel or those who are made aware of the channel's existence do not challenge the anachronistic nature of the anomaly and believe them to be historically accurate representations of life in the Mesozoic era. Individuals who have undergone cognitohazard training or who have a naturally high resistance are not subject to this effect. Addendum 1 Forward, the following recorded Zoom footage was retrieved from the NAPC conference organizers as part of the initial investigation into the incident. Only footage pertinent to the investigation of SCP-6556 has been included. Dr. Malcolm, all right. Thank you, Dr. Short, for that fascinating look at the limitations of the Caterpillar theory. Up next, we have Dr. Eleanor Grant with interactive presentation on new evidence of toxic flora at the end of the Cretaceous period. Just give me, uh, there we go. You should be able to screen share now. Take it away. Dr. Grant. Thanks, Greg. Today I'm going to be presenting on some new evidence that reinforces my prior work on the theory that the meteoric impact at Chicxulub may have been preceded by a smaller extinction process resulting from the development of toxic flora, wreaking havoc on the diet of late Cretaceous herbivores. Dr. Grant begins to play a YouTube video in the SCP-6556 collection titled Dino Vlog 22, A Flower Almost Murdered Me. After the title card, the video opens with Ty Rex holding the recording device. What's up, Jurassic Junkies? It's another warm day out here in the woods, and the pterodactyls are scrawling. Tyrex closes his eyes while flapping his free arm and making a recreation of a loud scrawl sound effect. So I figured, ah, uh, it would be a good day to go on a hike. Footage cuts to a montage with a remix of various dinosaur vocalizations playing while Tyrex walks through a wooded area, often focusing on various megaflora in the distance or smaller animals skittering away in clearings, before returning to a shot of Tyrex standing in front of a small plant with what appear to be berries. A mountain range can be seen in the distance in the background of the shot. Dr. Grant pauses the video and zooms into the mountain range before beginning to speak. See here. Through comparison to different estimated maps of the area, I am confident that these are the Rocky Mountains, placing Rex in roughly the area that would one day be Canada. Dr. Grant zooms out and then back in on the plant behind Tyrex. And here we have a clear example of a rudimentary angiosperm with Tyrex. Now watch as Dr. Smith interrupts. Dr. Grant, I'm sorry, but I have to say something. This is ridiculous. Dr. Grant replies, Excuse me, Dr. Smith, what you're about to claim is not possible. You see those fern-like leaves? That is clearly some kind of teredosperm, and nothing more. A completely harmless plant that existed for millions of years prior to the decline. There's no way it poisoned anything, or the decline would be seen much earlier. I appreciate your ambition, but this does not stand up to academic rigor. Dr. Harris, actually... I think Dr. Grant is right on this one, Jim. We don't really know what the early angiosperms looked like, so, theoretically, they could have had leaves like that. If you read the paper on the theories surrounding Dr. Smith. Exactly. Theories. Until you have verifiable evidence that there is no way I'm going to believe any of this. Dr. Harris, you know better than to espouse that logic. You look at the same rock 
talks as we do, Dr. Wessler. Sorry, everyone, but before this gets too heated, I think we should also look at the source of this evidence. Doctors Smith and Harris murmur in agreement. Dr. Wessler, the title of the video is clearly clickbait, so we can't make any assumptions that Tyrex hasn't altered the plan somehow to give the presented reaction. Dr. Malcolm, that's a valid point, Priyanka. Dr. Grant, what is the provenance of the video? There, Dr. Grant replies, there recently discovered videos on YouTube uploaded towards the close of the Cretaceous period. They give unparalleled insight into Mesozoic societal norms through following the activities of this adolescent T-Rex. Dr. France, I'm sorry, but is this whole thing a ploy? I think that was what Dr. Wessler was asking, hopefully. Dr. Grant, good question. Yes, it's possible the whole video is a ploy for views. And we need to approach the evidence with that in mind. However, I still believe a lot can be gleaned from them as Dr. France, for God's sake, Dr. France leaves the conference call. Dr. Grant, seems Dr. France is encountering some technical difficulties there. Are there any other questions? Dr. Chan, Eleanor, while I'm not appreciating your theory on the role of Sukiacarpa staroi in a minor extinction event, I can't help be startled by the fact that in the background of the footage during the hike, there was clearly a Brachiosaurus. Prior to this, our understanding of the fossil record had these two species existing 100 million years apart. This is quite revolutionary, and I don't think I can understate the implications for our field here. Dr. Grant, that's a fantastic point, and if you check out this other video here, Dr. Grant pulls up a YouTube video in the SCP-6556 collection titled Dino Vlog 27, I'm sorry, and begins to play the video from the start. Footage starts with a cold open, revealing Tyrex in a room, dimly lit by some form of fire, off-screen. The video includes seven advertisements placed by the YouTube platform that are played in their entirety during the presentation. However, the advertisements have not been included in the transcript due to being unconnected to the anomaly. Tyrex. Hi, everyone. So this isn't an easy video to make. Ty pauses and glances down at the ground before taking a deep intake of breath. Tyrex, in my last video, I ate some Parasaura Roloffus eggs as a joke that I now have realized is wrong. These actions don't represent me. They don't represent who I am as a dinosaur. And they don't represent the impact I want to have on the community. Unknown, if you want to trade stocks, Bitcoin, and crypto, there's only one place to be. Dr. Grant, oops, sorry, I didn't realize there'd be an ad. Let me just skip that. At the time, I was unaware of the hurt this would cause. But now I am, so I apologize for being unaware of the impact of my actions. At the time, I undertook them. If I could go back now and replay the eating of those Parasaurolophus eggs, would I do the same thing? Tyrex, yes, absolutely. They were absolutely delicious, but I'd do it knowing the full consequences of my actions. Tyrex again, going forward. I want to take this lesson, learn from it, and grow. Dr. Grant, you can see that Tyrex was also vlogging during his time period as well giving us a fantastic view into the world of not only the days of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, but of the entire age of the dinosaurs. And I think Dr. Grant is interrupted by Ms. Stephen, who has been silent on the call until this point. Ms. Stephen, there we go. Sorry, couldn't figure out how to unmute myself. But do none of you see an issue with the fact that that's a real dinosaur speaking perfect English, modern English, in what appears to be a Canadian accent? Dr. Smith, oh, huh? Ms. Steven, and it's on the internet, the internet, creating 66 million years after dinosaurs went extinct. Am I the only one here realizing this? Dr. Malcolm, well, 
I, this is slightly embarrassing, Miss Stephen, and it's vlogging. Dr. Grant, I'm so sorry, everyone. It appears I've made a terrible oversight. Miss Stevens sighs. Miss Stevens. No, it's all right, Ellie. We've all been under a lot of stress lately. I thought I was going crazy for a moment. Dr. Grant, I don't know how I didn't see it at first. This completely revolutionizes everything. Dinosaurs invented the internet. All their conference participants unmute themselves and begin enthusiastically voicing their agreement. Miss Stevens. Oh, come on. Afterward, during the 10-minute recess, Foundation operatives were notified of the event, and amnestics were administered at the homes of each attendee. So as we can see from this SCP, that you're going to be dealing with, mostly you're just going to be looking for 